Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the biggest ever BSI Standards Conference and Awards. This is one of the highlights of our calendar as the UK's national standards body, and this is record attendance. It's where we bring together stakeholders from the standards making community, the users, civil servants, and anybody who's interested in how to use standards to really enable prosperity, growth, trade, sustainable development. Well, today we're trying to talk about some of the key issues of the day, and we're starting this morning with a conversation around global Britain needing global standards. Global Britain needs global standards. 29% of annual GDP growth can be contributed to use of standards and 6 billion of additional UK exports annually can be attributed to use of standards. 80% of our production in Europe is absorbed around the world. Only 20% of our products are delivered in this country or in European countries. The advantage that we have in the UK is that our national standards, British standards, are almost entirely international and European regional standards already. A great distinction of um, bodies like ISO, IC, and CEN and CENELEC. And this is the way we develop the standards. And I think it's very important for the standards uh, organizations uh, to be in contact with those that are actually making the standards. Uh. I undertook a study for the government looking at small and medium sized enterprising and looking at the implementation of ISO 14001. Small firms can make significant uh, savings and more importantly, get new customers by implementing uh, environmental standards. We've got 19 awards today, and they're going to go to people who've done the most amazing things. It was just fabulous to win the award. It's really wonderful for the work to be recognised in this way. Really actually shows that they appreciate the work and the contribution that as a charity we put in to help actually reduce accidents in the home. I feel humbled and honoured. Uh, you don't get into this work for winning awards, uh, you get into it because you want to contribute. Now we've got our closing panel session about the challenges that we have around global trade and around diversity and inclusivity. The World Economic Forum estimates that for income parity for women, we would have to wait to the 23rd century. So that's 10 generations. There are people from all backgrounds that can be engineers and can progress into engineering and can stay in engineering and do good work. More women die in car crashes because the test dummies are still made to the standardized male. I was part of the journey with um, Caitlin uh, drafting the UNEC Declaration on Gender Responsive Standards and Standards Development. And where we've come to now is what Scott referred to this morning is our Inclusive as Standard initiative. Key takeaways for me today are the issues that are challenging the world of standards, the participation and the diversity and how we address them. Well for me in the construction industry we're developing BIM which is building information management and we need to be able to read the standards data by machine and that's being developed. I learned that today and that's a great news for me. Producing a product on the basis of one product for multiple markets, not multiple products for multiple markets. This conference is really very, very important and completely in line with what ISO is trying to do, to get more and more people involved in standards. Well, I think the big takeaways for me are the really keen interest that everybody's shown in the geopolitical dimension of standards the role of standards to achieve change, to reach sustainable development goals, to engage with people and stakeholders everywhere. This is no longer just about technical standards, it's about people everywhere. And everybody wants to be part of that journey. 